Hello, my name is Zach Ciotta with the HVAC Shop Talk podcast. And in today's training video, I'm going to be talking about some installation practices and facts that a lot of guys might know, some might not know. And I'm going to use the install manual for the Bosch IDS 2.0 to highlight some things that might help you level up your install capabilities or just make you aware of certain things that'll widen your HVAC knowledge base. This video is brought to you by NAVAC Tools, empowering you to work smarter. So let's take a look at some slides. Now we might take this for granted, but there are ways to do things that are very simple for veteran HVAC installers that might not be understood by new people. And some people might just overlook this. When you have a suction line running with a liquid line, this is not a mini split style system. This is a unitary system that's been going back for years and years. It doesn't have a saturated vapor line like a mini split. It has a liquid line, it has a suction line. So the liquid line is warm, the suction line is cold. So you might think to yourself, and I know some people have actually done it in refrigeration, put that little tubing with the subcooled liquid right next to the suction line to get some free subcooling out of it. And it's really not a good idea. What happens is not only some corrosion from having that tear in the vapor barrier around the suction line, but there's no real benefit to your system having that liquid line there. And it's more of a liability opening that suction line to heat and opening it up so it communicates with the outdoors. It's better just to leave your suction line wrapped, insulation around it with the liquid line separate. Typically, I would tape them together but there's several different methods people use. I think tape is probably the best method because I've seen wire and of course wire cuts into the insulation, zip ties cut into the insulation as well. So you really have to be careful because you want to have this line set last for years and years and years, and it looks good on day one, but you want it to look relatively good on year 10 as well. Now I have a picture here of a condenser and an evaporator coil and it says standard line set, 150 foot max line length. So when you get into a situation where you have condensers and evaporators that are very far apart, or maybe on different levels of a building, there are some considerations and limitations to how far above and below a condenser and evaporator can be, and how far apart they can be. Now the Bosch says here that you can be up to 150 foot max line length. You want to be aware of that because that adds up very quickly when you're in an apartment building or some large home. There are homes out there that I know a lot of us have seen, these very well-to-do folks that have expansive properties. They want all the condensers behind one brick wall and then your evaporators on the opposite end of the house, and maybe on the third floor or fourth floor of a house. I think it's very difficult to get it there and adhere to the line set length. It's better to tell the guy or lady that you have to move the condenser than have an issue with the compressor starving for oil or excessive pipe length. Here's another picture of a condenser and an evaporator coil. And this time, instead of talking about total line length, we're talking about max line lift. There is a limitation to how far above or below a condenser and evaporator can sit because there's always issues with making sure a compressor can pump that far and also get the oil back to the unit itself. And of course, the charge is going to vary widely depending on how long that line set is. So on the Bosch IDS 2.0, it says 50 foot is a max line lift. So you have to keep that in mind for any high rise or any apartment building that might come into play. Typically, when you go to an apartment building, you see units up on the roof and units on the ground in a lot of cases because you have to have consideration for how long the line set can be. Whenever you install a piece of equipment, you should always look and see what the limitations are so you make sure you stay within them. The last thing we'll talk about on this particular episode is long, low voltage wiring. Now this can be to the thermostat as well, or maybe even a sensor or a control panel when you have 18 gauge thermostat wire, which is the most common in my career was the most common. Perhaps you see different gauges where you're at in different industry corners or might be larger gauges. But for me, it was always an 18 gauge wire. In 18 gauge, you'll see it written 18 AWG American wire gauge. Same thing. 
It says the max wire length for the Bosch IDS 2.0 is going to be 150 feet. Now, what happens if you have excessive wire run? You'll have excessive voltage drop. And anybody who's worked in commercial has probably seen a transformer and a piece of equipment that was wired incorrectly. If you wire up a transformer for 230 and it's a 208 power source, you're going to have a lower low voltage on the secondary side. Me personally, I remember a time when the low voltage was coming out at 19 volts and it was significant because it was a zone system that had spring dampers and those dampers would not open all the way because the voltage was too low to open them up against the force of that spring. As you can see on this chart, we have 16 AWG American wire gauge and also 14. So if you were running 14 gauge thermostat wire, which I've never seen before personally, but it might happen out there. Obviously they put it in here for a reason. You can go up to 300 feet. So if you have a special circumstance, you can keep that in mind. I hope you enjoyed this video or podcast, depending on how it's coming to you. And please, if this is a podcast, give it a review. Taking that time to give it a review is just a huge thing for the podcast. It widens how many people can see the podcast. If you're on YouTube, give the video a like. That's the best thing you can do. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the video. Give me some direction for what you'd like to hear about next. I know I'm going to talk about calculating additional charge on a line set. That'll be coming up real soon. But if you want to investigate something in particular or talk about a certain subject, don't hesitate to put it in the comments. You can also email me at hvacshoptalk at gmail.com. And as always, I will see each one of you on the next one. But I